All right, it's time to talk about how the 49ers run game was successful against the New York Jets on Monday Night Football. And for this video, we're going to go ahead and use a few clips from the game, and you're going to see that the schemes the 49ers ran were able to take advantage of the defensive alignment of the Jets. All right, so here's the play that we're going to go ahead and start off with. It's the second and sixth play. It's the, it's the drive right after the Jets score a touchdown, and the 49ers are coming out in 12 personnel. Eric Saubert, who is the tight end right here, number 82, he's going to come in motion and he's going to kick out the defensive end. And this, is, this looks like inside zone, but it's actually duo. If you look at the track of Jordan Mason, it's more downhill. And you can see the way that Brock Purdy opens up. It's to maximize the double team where we're going to work double team up to here, double team up to here, Kittle up right here, Debo right here. And Trent Williams is going to go all the way out to that defensive end who's standing out in Timbuktu in this wide nine look. And so we're just going to run the play to give you guys an idea of just how open it is for Jordan Mason. He has a plethora of areas that he can go. And we're just going to watch the All-22 on this play. Uh, excuse me, the end zone view of the All-22 on this play because it just gives you an idea. Let's stop right here. Where should Jordan Mason go on this play? Well, he can go here. He can go here, which is where he eventually goes. And he could probably even sneak through here if he wanted to. So he has wherever he wants to go. And he cuts back to the right. And really, that's play side because it's duo. Everybody's blocking to the left. So technically, he's staying play side. But he goes to the right and gets a good game. But what I'm going to highlight is it's not just the formation right here. For whatever reason, the Jets are in this weird alignment that I don't like if I'm looking at it. It's second and six. Our defensive end is standing outside the receiver who's in a tight look. In this way wide nine, like he's going to be rushing the passer, okay? You're basically expecting your two interior defensive linemen to hold up and prevent any type in this look, in this alignment, prevent, you know, the offensive line from getting downfield to the linebackers and making the play. There's no threat right here. They're so wide open. If you count the number of blockers that are on this play that are going to happen with the motion, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's how many are in the box at the time. You're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six defenders in the box. This alignment, I'm not counting him. I'm not counting your end out here because he is so far out there. He's not in the box. He's not even a threat at all to come from the backside on this play. So when we run the play, let's go ahead and run it again. The 49ers actually outnumber the Jets. It's way too easy for them. And they can get up and make these blocks, and there's just a hole the size of Texas in the Jets' defensive front. I mean, again, Trent Williams is basically pass setting. That's what he's doing. He's not even going out. I'm just like, I'll just, I'll just wall you off. That is literally what Trent Williams is doing there on this play. So let's go ahead and take a look at another play. Okay, so here's a second play that we're going to cover. And you can see that the Jets are in a better look technically against this front, especially up the middle. You've got a four eye right here. We've got our nose. And then we've got another four eye. So they're really in the middle preparing to stop a, a run inside. However, part of the problem is look where the defensive ends are. Once again, they're leaving a big gap that's going to allow the 49ers to take advantage of it. And guess what? The 49ers are going to run duo again. This time with Kyle Juszczyk going in motion, he's going to come across the formation just like this, and he's going to kick out Jermaine Johnson. And everybody else is going to block to their left. And then Kittle's going to climb up to first available defender. That will end up being C.J. Mosley right here. We're going to have Debo come up, block the corner, and the track is going to be right there, and they're going to take advantage, again, of that big old bubble, that big old space that's created by the alignment of the defensive end. So let's run the play. Everybody's washed down. Jordan Mason's able to creep through and get some good yards on the play. It doesn't look like much, but it is a good play. So let's go ahead, go back. Run it, and you can see, just taking advantage. They're washing everything down. The Jets' 
defensive line just did not have a good game. They kept getting manhandled. They could get manhandled by one blocker, by two blockers. They just couldn't fight the resistance. And right here, because of the way they're aligned, they're giving up a big play to the 40. A good play of the 49ers. Not a big play. I shouldn't say a big play. But they're giving them good yards. I mean, look where the ball is at at the start of the play. The ball is right here. It's on the 37-yard line. So when the time that Jordan Mason comes down, he's going to be up to the 45-yard line. So it's an eight-yard gain on this play. All right, so we're going to go to the next play after this. This is the third play that I'm going to go ahead and show you. This time it's inside zone. Kyle Yushik is going to motion. He's going to come into the, the backfield. Because of that, he really clears up the picture for the 49ers. We're going to have a kick out right here. We're going to work double team out to here. We're going to work double team up to here. We're going to have Trent Williams work up to here. We're going to, Yushik's going to come out. He's going to help hold the defensive end. And then Jordan Mason's going to take his track and try to make his read. And he actually, I think, misses the hole. There's a cutback right there. So let's go ahead and run the play. And what happens? We get the guy coming across the face of Trent Williams. He washes him down. And that's why I say that Jordan Mason probably misses the cutback because we actually have it right here. If he just keeps cutting back, he is off to the races. Cutback right here. He's got it right there. So he does miss the cutback, but you got to trust the running backs to. With their with their eyes and their their way that they feel the game, you can't you can overcoach running backs. So you've just got to let them run, and you teach them where to go, and then based on everything that they have, their abilities and their talent, uh, they're going to go through it. So I wonder if McCaffrey wouldn't have seen the cutback. But the whole part that I'm saying is, look at the way the Jets are aligned. They're bringing being a little bit more aggressive, but again, they're getting blocked out of the way. They're not really even holding up again your two interior defensive linemen are not holding up like they're not being they're not causing a stalemate is what i'm trying to say they're getting blocked out of the way by the 49ers offensive line so i'm just going to go ahead and go to another play here we're out of the gun here comes kittle he's going to get into the look and it's inside zone and this time guess who air mason goes he gets the cutback somebody says hey look for the cutback on inside zone so it's a wham block Kittle's going to come across, and Mason, he doesn't waste any action. He just cuts and gets vertical, and he gets a good gain. Let's go back. Let's take a look at how we've got the defensive alignment. So right here, we're actually going to be working wide out to the defensive end. we got to we gotta really work out to here. We're going to work up to here. We're working up to here. Look at how wide the inside for the offense is. Both of the defensive tackles are really, in essence, in four eyes. And there's no one else in the middle. So they're both in four eyes. But there's nobody here. There's nobody here. So basically, you have this entire space that now, even if they're trying to cross the face, you're going to create a situation where there's nobody to help hold these gaps. and. So what you see is exactly what happens, and that's why everybody gets washed down, and Jordan Mason is able to take that inside track right there. Kittle's like, I missed the block. Uh, because Jordan Mason makes safety miss, and, and it's just it's that close. But this is, this, is, this is obviously Jordan Mason went to the sideline, got said, hey, look for the cutback on those inside zones. You probably have it. And he just, because of the way he feels, his instincts, he sees it, and he cuts back, and he gets a good gain on this play out of shotgun. So, again, I, I don't understand the alignment here. And the 49ers have run this. Last year against the Bengals, they ran this type of alignment, and I didn't like it because you're just giving up way too much to the offensive line. Like They were just like, okay, we got – there's no one threatening the inside of either the center or the guards, and so because of that, that's the problem on this play. Okay, so here's the fifth play that I'm going to go ahead and show you. And it's another look that the 49ers are giving up front. We're going to have pre-snap motion here by Kyle Juszczyk. And at the snap, he's going to be the run running, running the wham as the 49ers are going to run inside zone to the left. Jordan Mason is going to motion over and get behind McKivitz. And then he's going to take his track for inside zone. What I want you to notice, though, is that the Jets will adjust, do a pre-snap defensive line shift 
And Jermaine Johnson does a great job at not getting knocked off the ball by Aaron Banks. So here we go. Motion over by Jordan Mason. Then we get the wham block by Juszczyk. But Aaron Banks does not get as good of a block against Jermaine Johnson. Now, one of the things that I think could possibly happen is maybe Mason could have fit up inside, cutting off Brendel and Banks' butt. But he just didn't trust it, so he bounced it. And they still get some yards, but not as many yards as they've been giving inside, which is one of the problems that the Jets had, was that the 49ers were able to run the ball inside. So this is a really good job by Jermaine Johnson. We get the pre-snap uh, defensive alignment shift. They're back to kind of that three-man type front. I still think the ends are really wide on this play. If the 49ers had run anything into that area, I think it would have been a problem. But because they're running inside zone, Jermaine Johnson is able to be to take on only one blocker, hold up banks, and then make the make the play when the time comes. So that's a really good play, and I'm going to give credit to the Jets on that one. Let's go to this one though. So again, we have been having pre-snap movement happening all the time. Here, Kyle Yuschek, he is going to go ahead, and he's going to come over to the right as though it is 12 personnel with Kittle on the opposite side and him as a tight end. And we're going to see outside zone to the right. We're going to have Debo Samuel. He's going to motion over, get behind Williams, and then take off for the outside zone. And really, it looks like the 49ers have this blocked up. Just based on the look that we're getting, we're going to have really a solo block right here. Work up by McKivitz. Pooney and Brendel are going to work up to Mosley. We got double team right here as we're stepping up to that backer and then it it's there so i'm going to run the play and you're going to see that debo does do a good job making his read so we're going to go ahead run the play kittle jermaine johnson tries to cut in front of him and kittle actually does engage him and jermaine johnson's not going to make the play brendel's got to do a better job making the block on mosley coming off and getting the block on mosley because then it would have been debo versus sauce gardner on this play and one of the things that you kept hearing, especially in the broadcast, was how the 49ers would keep all their run plays were inside the tackles. Well, there's no, there, there's a good reason that their run plays are inside the tackle. Look where the tackle is going out to make his block. The defender to the outside is way out here. And so we're going to probably make this cut inside of the tackles just based on that look. So we're going to get the pre snap look, and then we're going to get the run. And of course, we're going to cut inside. The tackles because the edge defenders are so wide. I again I don't know why the Jets were going so wide. Brendel's just got to do a better job making this block. He does a better job making this block. And it's it's Debo versus uh Sauce Gardner, and it's a bigger gain. Even then, they still get a good gain on the play because Debo does make the break. And it's about a five-yard gain, I think. Five to six yard gain on this play. This also, guys, they will run counter out of that pre-snap motion look. So you can't just cheat uh, to the opposite side. Uh, okay, the bet you can't cheat if you're the defense. Let me show you. You can't cheat to the defense to, to the defense is left, the offense is right, just because Debo moves moves over that way because they'll run counter back the opposite direction. But again, just based on the alignment that the defense is giving them, the 49ers are able to have a clean, easy box of who they're supposed to work to. And again, I just, I don't, I don't like how far out wide the ends are really on this play. I know they're trying to play pass, but man, are they far out there? And it, it, it just doesn't help the, to, to really set the edge or, or help hold up because it creates a gap within your defensive line. Let's go ahead. We're going to go to another play. And this time I'm going to use the sideline view for you. So you guys can see again, it's going to be an outside zone. It's going to be outside zone to the left. I want you to watch. What happens on the back side here? So we get motion by Jennings. And we're going to get this handoff right here. And this Michael Clemens just comes way too far down. And that is a great job, again, by Eric Salbert, because he just washes Michael Clemens down. And notice that Jordan Mason just, he just cuts back all the way. One of the things about outside zone that you guys have to understand is you can cut it really to the backside and it can really affect the defense if they all want to over pursue you can cut it back and that's exactly what happens here we'll look at the end zone view and again look what we've got box wise is it any surprise that 
Jordan Mason's going to cut up inside of his tackle. Because look, look who's look where Trent Williams has to go. He has to go way out here, way out here. But again, the defensive alignment is helping them because this is just, oh, this is nice. You can easily get the double team to climb up right here. Your receiver can go get right there. Receiver can go get right there. I mean, this is just this is just easy, easy stuff. Wash it down. Really kind of a double team climb up. I mean, there is nothing here that makes this. This is like what I would love as an old line coach to have with my with the look for my guys. Because then it's like, oh, let's just go right here. That's outside zone. And Mosley, you know, doesn't get blocked, but he's way over pursued. And so when Mason makes his cut, he's kind of out of position. But again, it's just so simple. Okay, let's just climb up. Okay, we get to our guys. Oh, cut back. Little juke right there by Jordan Mason to make Sus Gardner fall down. And that's how that is. Again, I, I just, I'm not understanding the defensive alignment having the end so wide out. You're just not helping hold. It doesn't create any issues. And because they're so wide, they're trying to chase down the play. It makes it simple for, for the backside to just wash down like Michael Clements, who does not do a great job. He just allows himself to get washed down there. And then Jordan Mason just cuts back off of it. Great play. And again, inside the tackles that this play, that, that he's hitting this run, even though really there's the tackle. But he's going all the way to the backside, so that's why it's going to be counted as inside the tackle because he is inside the tackle, but he kind of ran where the outside tackles. So here we go. Uh, this is on one of the last drives for the 49ers. Guess what? It's duo. It's duo. It feels like duo. You know why? Because we get a seal by McKivitz. We've got two guys going out to kick out. And this is basically Mason's biggest run of the day when you really need it. And he cuts off of it. So let's go back. Let's take a look. That's why I say it looks like duo because everybody on the offensive line is all stepping to the left. Like they're stepping out and then they're stepping to the left. So I can't tell if they're just sealing off and these guys are, are blocking. But we got two lead blockers out. Not a great pursuit right here. And allows Jordan Mace to get to the outside. And it is a first down. And that's Tony Adams that doesn't take a great angle for the Jets. You'll see it from the end zone view here. Again, look how wide Jermaine Johnson is. We've got basically a four-eye, three-technique here. Two-eye. Some will know it as a one-tech. Not as wide. But again... Clean box. It's, everything is just so clean. It's easy to know where to go. Yeah, this is duo. He's coming backside here, working to here. We've got here. And then you just got a fullback to help fill in. And easy. And that is just how easy it can be when it comes to it. And this is the problem for the Jets on this play. Uh, in, in this game is that it wasn't just that the 49ers used different formations and motions and things like that. They took advantage of the way, one, that the Jets were aligned, and two, they were just more physical. They were aggressive and more physical at the point of attack, and it shows every time on film, basically. The majority of the time, the 49ers were just able to be more physical. Sometimes it's just bad angles as well. It's just a wild film to watch. But the 49ers used a lot of motions with pre-snap stuff to get the eyes looking and then bringing back a player the opposite direction to run a play that normally isn't run that way. And so you just have all of this tied up into all these reasons why the 49ers were able to control the ball, control their run game against the Jets. And so if the 49ers offensive line can do this consistently, they're in a good situation. Dominic Pooney, I made a video about how he is an athletic beast on the offensive line. My God, he is going to be a big help on the right side of the offensive line for the 49ers moving forward. Hopefully he can stay healthy. And this team really gels together up front because if they can, it's going to be a good year for the 49ers. But that's my thoughts. Hopefully gives you a bit of insight as to why the 49ers were able to control and have success with their run game against the New York Jets. Let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like. Make sure to subscribe to the channel as well if you enjoy this type of content. We'll see you next time, though. Have a great rest of the day.
I do want to recognize the members of this channel at the booster level and above for their support. If you wish to have your name in a video just like this, make sure to check out the join link in the description below. Here on the end screen, you can see that there's another recommended video. Make sure to click that and watch it. Also, make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on any future breakdown videos. I hope you have a great rest of the day.